Hi, this is Dr. Dan Purser, danpursermd.com. Um, tonight, oh, welcome to my Facebook Live. Tonight, what, there's a call going on, you said, Brecken? Oh, no. Are they coming back to the Facebook <laughs> I'll Live I'll get now? them here, I'll get them here. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> they will decide to go do their own Facebook Live to the side on my, that's kind of odd. Okay, anyway, hope they all come back. Tonight, 10 plus medical and natural therapies that can clean out your arteries. It doesn't get any better than this. Heart attacks and strokes are the, by far and away the hugest number one cause of death for men and women in the U.S. and around the world. Would you agree, Brecken? Yep, I would. I wasn't listening, but I agree. I shouldn't do that, but I do. Okay, so um, Brecken's sitting across from me. She's my co-assistant. And Asia's to my left. Jackson is... Um, is straight ahead and he's running the board and everything on it um and he's also controlling the video is that right jackson uh yes are we getting a good feed uh we were hold on i'm still looking good over here okay yeah okay good jackson if you'd play the theme song please That, that wasn't Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. No, we upgraded. That was the Stars Born. No, it wasn't that either. It was the theme from Star Wars. <laughs> yep. I knew that had something to do with the star. Are there any other songs of stars we have not played? Uh, yes, many, many songs. <laughs> we should probably delve into a few more of those. What is that instrument you're playing? Was that the flugelhorn? No. The kalimba horn. <laughs> That's not a horn. It's a little wood, scruffy wooden box you're playing. Didn't you get that out of the Amazon? Yep, out of the Amazon, yes. Okay, where they play it right before they throw blow darts at people. Mm -hmm. Okay, so tonight we're going to cover 10 plus medical natural therapies that can cause plaque regression. At the end of this, I will try and answer a few questions. I've already put some really controversial stuff up. We'll probably cover that. Brecken, why don't you start off with the questions now? We're just diving right in. Yeah, these are the ones we scripted out, right? Okay. We'll get to the wild ones later, later if we can. Go ahead. What causes plaque in arteries? Inflammation, really. So increased blood pressure, which causes inflammation. Out of control blood pressure causes inflammation. Vascular inflammation itself. Stress, lack of exercise, sedentary lifestyle. That's sedentary lifestyle. Generalized inflammation, smoking, drug use, poor food choices that cause inflammation, all that. Anything you can do to reduce the inflammation helps prevent the plaque formation and can help clear it out. So, okay, Breck, and lay the next one on me. Where are the most deadly, or what are the most deadly arteries for clogging? Well, tonight, mainly we're going to focus on carotid arteries. Because you can have a stroke from those and coronary arteries. If your coronary arteries are clogged, your carotid arteries are probably clogged too. So keep that in mind. If you do anything to your carotids, you might as well do it to your coronary arteries. If you're going to do something to your coronary arteries, you got to consider your carotid arteries because they're both probably clogged. Yeah, mm -hmm. sadly. And probably your renal arteries too, but we'll, let's not discuss that much. Yeah. What is the reality of cardiovascular stents? Boy, this is a hot topic. I posted that. Yeah. Just about took a screenshot off Google and posted it to make my point. And people have come back with really good points. But I'd like to note that stents, the studies have shown that they just do not prolong life. I know you guys are coming in glued, having major coronaries over it. You better get a stent put in. I'm kidding. But... Um, but um too soon yeah too soon but it what usually happens okay i will say this and someone made this point so i i i, I definitely understand this but what i do think is that cardiologists put them in and can use it to buy a, a brief window of time to start these people on statins azetamide and other treatments to help them get what are we talking about tonight? Plaque regression or clean out your coronary arteries. So in a vacuum, when they did those studies, when these people were just having stents placed, it did not prolong life. 
it just doesn't do it. There's just been no studies to show that. They've done done them over and over again. Science um, probably had the, the last report on it, and it was a general review of all those studies, and just didn't show that stints added any time to life. So, um, and I realize they can help get rid of pain. They do buy a little time until the cardiovascular surgeon can get there. So in that essence, in that sense, they might prolong life, but still you're having a major intervention or it's time to get that patient on statins or uh, and azetamibe and other treatments to, to um, reduce plaque. Sorry. Um, what is the best test according to the American College of Medicine? This has been about 10 or 12 years ago. They advised 64 slikes cat angiogram. I just haven't seen that taken off, though. And that's from the American College of Medicine uh, because it'll show any coronary artery disease clogging. It's a gated test where they gate it to an EKG, EKG reading on your heart. Uh, so they can time it right, and the, and the, the 64 slice cat scan will take 64 slices through your heart, not slices like a knife, but slice images through your heart, uh, and so they can see the cloggage in your arteries, all the arteries, um, and uh, and give you an idea. And I've seen them come back from anywhere from one or two percent clogged, which is shock was shocking for me for the the people and their lifestyles and everything. I don't know how they did it. Some people are just lucky to where they were 85 or 95% clogged. Um, what's easier, though, is a calcium score or coronary artery score. It's called it's cheap, it's easy, and, and painless, pretty much painless. They do that before they do the, uh, the 64 slice cat angio. Also, the beauty of a calcium score is that they will, it will show whether the plaque is soft or hard. Which would you prefer, hard or soft plaque, Brecken? I'm basically in my head, I would think soft, but I think hard is actually what you want, right? You want it hardened because if you get soft plaque, it can break away and does break away and it causes strokes, yeah. heart attacks, stuff like that. So you want an aged, hardened plaque, which I know is totally weird. Yeah, it it's like, backwards. I don't want the hard plaque in my artery. <laughs> yeah, but it's already there. You might as well help it's hard. And then later, yeah, as you look at some of the images I put up the last week um, in some of the, the pushes I was doing for this Facebook Live tonight, you can see where the, the statins cause the, the plaque to melt away, cause it to resolve, causes it to regress. Plaque regression is cool. I've been collecting these studies for years. And keep in mind, everyone, I've written a textbook on preventive medicine where I detailed a lot of this information. That was a good... 17, 18 years ago, but still hasn't changed much since then. But we'll go over some things tonight, that some newer things. So go ahead. Another question, Brecken. What is EST? You mentioned Exercise that. stress testing, which cardiologists do. Roughly, though, you got to be... So I've seen studies saying 75% or 85% is the highest. You got to be 85% clogged. Before the EST shows positive, which is a very bad thing, and then they'll do a uh, coronary artery catheterization and shoot dye in there to get a better image of what's going on. Um, and you could have done that with the uh, C4 slice can angio in my mind. So I always order that for my patients. So, and I um, will put links up to the Mayo Clinic and Hopkins Medicine on um, heart tests you may need, but likely have, haven't heard of. That's more the the coronary artery score, the CAS system or calcium score. So um, also for carotid arteries, you get a CIMT testing, which is a, a plaque scan of the carotid intima media thickness testing um, or CIMT. Um, and it uses sound waves to detect blockages in the carotid artery. So that's another good test for your, especially if you're a woman, because women tend to have strokes a lot more often than men. But men should get that too. If they have coronary artery disease, you're going to have carotid artery disease. Do you want me to go through my list? <laughs> you're, you're kind of busy. You're, you're, I'm are sorry. You, I was answering some questions. Are you emailing questions. your husband again? No, I was I answering some him. questions. <laughs> yeah, why don't you go through your plaque regression interventions? You're mostly, yeah, mostly off -label. mostly Mostly these are off-label uses, but... If you see a good cardiologist or lipidologist, 
they should be ordering most of these, not all these, but at least two or three or four of these. So, um, and help you get rid of that plaque. So let's start. I know most of you are very anti-statin. I'm sorry. We're doing both medical and and natural options today. So I'm gonna I'm gonna give them all to you. Statins are are the mainstay for getting rid of plaque uh, and for getting rid of um, inflammation in your coronary and carotid arteries. As far as I know, when I wrote my textbook and even now today, I'm pretty sure the only two statins I really like that really have lots of solid studies behind them are simvastatin and uh, rosuvastatin. And they're both generics, they're both cheap. Um, and I always go max dose, 80 milligrams on the simvastatin, 40 milligrams on the rosuvastatin. There's no use monkeying around. The problem with rosuvastatin or any statin, but, but a little more so with rosuvastatin because it's so aggressive, is that it can cause liver inflammation, mm. which I get whenever I take rosuvastatin, so I can't take it. I've given up. I, I can take simvastatin. It doesn't cause me any problems. So also you should take Qnol, Mega Qnol, or your favorite Ubiquinol, at least 200 milligrams a day if you take statins. Um and hundreds of studies support that you um, you need uh, the statins to help with plaque regression. The Qnol or the or Ubiquinol, uh, that's more from Stephen Sinatra's work and some other people's work. Um, Stephen Sinatra's a cardiologist in Boston. You can look him up. Um, he's no relation to, to um, Frank, he says, but um, he's a really good cardiologist that understands Ubiquinol and it's used in coronary artery disease. So, number two, statin plus the zetamibe. Um, it's even better. Many dozens of studies support that. Matter of fact, that's what I take. I take simvastatin and a zetamibe, and I, I've got really clean arteries now. Again, it works really well. Um, and they're both generic, so they're both cheap. And uh, works like magic. So if your cardiologist has got you on a set and it's not working perfectly, they're probably considering zetamibe, or they should. It'll also help with triglycerides. But I'll give you another option for that here a little later. Um, and I don't have any side effects from either one. That's good. So I take them, and they're great. So optimizing thyroid levels. I know this is a little weird, but this is what the studies show. And I'm going to put links up. Do you see all those links below this? Yeah. Yeah, those are all linked studies. I just searched PubMed for each one of these concepts, and there's just literally dozens or hundreds of studies, sometimes thousands of studies, each one of these. But if you optimize thyroid levels, the FT3 level, usually to 4.0 to 4.8. My, my lab goes to 4.2. I keep mine at 4.1 to 4.2, my FT3. Lab equipment varies and so ranges vary, but you want to be near the upper end of and maybe it's a vitamin deficiency preventing it. So you may want to get, we'll talk about that here in a minute. Remind me about that CMA. Mm -hmm. And I'll talk to, talk to him about that. But Because anything you do to improve your thyroid functionality helps. But it might be anywhere from 4.2 to 4.8, according to the range and of the equipment you use. But there's been studies that show the optimal FT3 levels or thyroid levels, the one that warms your hands and all that, will cause plaque regression. Isn't that cool? That is really cool, actually. Yeah. Yeah, whenever I get a patient thyroid dialed in, their cholesterol and, pl and lipids tend to go to normal. So, some I mean, I don't know. That should be a consideration for bad cholesterol cases. And totally, stuff, yeah. Also, you don't want to push thyroid very high with someone with cholesterol or plaque problems because uh, you can get their heart beating fast if, it's, if it gets jittery or starts mm -hmm. Jumping uh, around. tachycardic. Yeah, and then it can cause a heart attack. So... You kind of walk in a line there, so you got to be careful. Yeah. Okay, the big one, lowering number four, lowering blood pressure to below 120 over 70. This is really critical, 120 over 70 or thereabouts. Think of a, a water hose you've had on all summer with the spigot on the far end turned off. It's out in the heat. It's getting cracked. It gets aged looking. Well, that's what's happening to your arteries all the time when um, when you have untreated high blood pressure. So it's just enough to make your arteries go wonky and they get inflamed. And then the plaque comes in and the plaque comes in. Uh, white blood cells come in to, to take care of the cracks in the walls of your arteries. 
just coat it over. And then you get another crack to coat that over. You keep getting cracks, they keep coating all those over. Because you have poorly controlled blood pressure. Shame on you. You might be lightheaded for a little while while you're getting your blood pressure lined up. And lots of studies have shown the average American, you know how many blood pressure meds the average American needs to normalize their blood pressure? A lot. Four. Yeah. Four. So, and I try and keep mine down around 120 over 70. So. How do you do that? Blood pressure med. Oh. <laughs> Is there any other way? Because yeah, I'm seeing that. Exercise, work out. When I'm working out more, which I'm getting back into now for the new year, doing my push-ups and everything, walking, my blood pressure stays super low. <clears throat> but I do have to take a blood pressure. I've got that genetic ACE uh, factor, and my blood pressure was... When I finally figured it out after having headaches at Disneyland all those years, it was 220 over 170. Ooh. Yeah, it was freaking scary. So That's like emergency level. It's helped that I've lost probably 90 pounds in the last year or two. So worked hard at that. Yeah. Okay, number five. Another one. This is Crazyville, but it's nice and 2,000 milligrams per day. 2,000? Oh. Yeah, I did that for a long time. I you have to work your way up to it. It's crazy town to get there because yeah. you're even at at a hundred or two fifty. Some people flush. flush. That nice and flush is horrible. Yeah. You turn red. You're prickly all over. You got to go. I would go take cold showers because I finally just started taking when I got to two thousand. Started taking two thousand at night for bed, hoping I'd be asleep. <laughs> what does that do? Why does the niacin help? <clears throat> Especially works with statins. There's tons of studies again on it, but it causes plaque regression. Mm. I'm not, I couldn't tell you the science offhand. I used to know it, but yeah. it does do it. And you buy it over the counter, but man, oh, get ready. That's a Niacinamide. I looked for studies showing it did it because that's a niacin without the blush. It's a precursor. 2,000 milligrams of niacinamide, but I don't think that'll do it. I couldn't find any studies to support it. Hmm. Probably one of the weirdest and biggest plaque regressors out there is pioglitazone. That's number six. Pioglitazone is a diabetic medication. But it, but in small doses, it causes plaque regression. It's probably about, I'd say, 2008. I was at Primed West in, in L.A., in Anaheim. And this guy spoke from Tulane at a dinner meeting that night. I just happened to wander into it because I was hungry. <laughs> and this, hey, I got in line and got mm. food and had to listen to this guy speak. He blew me off the door. He was amazing. Most amazing talk I've ever heard. He was president or no chair of the American College of Hypertension. Who knew there was such a thing? But there is. And all these hypertensive experts get together and figure all this stuff out. Well, he was chair. He's at Tulane. He's a hypertensologist. He's a hypertension specialist. That's all he did all day. Treated crazy hypertension uh, problems. So what he found, he had this before and after all these 64 slice cat angiograms of people who, before they went on pioglitazone, and then after they went on pioglitazone, he probably showed us 40 or 50 of them. He said every American... Should, when they hit about 45 or 50 or maybe younger, if they have coronary artery disease in their family or carotid artery, should take pioglitazone uh, once a year for three months. And I thought, okay, that's interesting. I realize that's not a huge recommendation, but when I get someone with bad coronary artery disease, and it's strictly an off-label use, but and they want to try to let them try it. It's just a small dose, but it really cleans out the arteries. The pictures he had were incredible. It went from horrible cloggage to... Completely clear coronary arteries and carotid arteries. It was amazing. Those wow, the guy. That was an incredible talk. I mean, he got a standing ovation from us. There were probably about three hundred people in the room eating, um, and um, and we got a standing ovation. I man, he should have. That was an incredible talk. <laughs> Pioglitazone is the bomb. So um, yeah, I go to getting a doctor to prescribe it for you for this, but. Um, but it does work, and there's lots of studies that show it. So, And that just hit me because I was writing that textbook on preventive medicine or at the time or finishing it up. So, And I had already found rosy glitazone, which they since it pulled off the market, it was doing it too aggressively. And and I said rosy glitazone or pioglitazone. It's in, it's in my book. Pioglitazone is in the book. So uh, my textbook. So, um, yeah. 
So the seven, number seven is hey, P. Real quick. <clears throat> Sorry, before we move on to these next points, I just want to remind everyone that this video will be recorded. It'll be posted live right after we're done. Um, and then the, there's also the podcast audios. We'll post um, the list of all these different medications afterwards. And definitely check out in the on your email. Um, once you sign up at danpursermd.com, you'll get the whole PDF of this Facebook Live companion PDF as well. Does that mean I need to fix my typos? Uh, we'll work on it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be, and we just have a lot of people asking uh, about all those. So, yeah, it, no. all, all this information I, will I continue to be up. I didn't put the dosing on each little thing because it varies per person, but no. Yeah. So, number seven, PDSK9 inhibition. What? That's a that's fairly new. The last two or three years, uh, PD, or probably four or five years, PDSK9 inhibition research has been done, and it really causes plaque regression aggressively. The problem is, it's a weekly shot. It's called R Repatha, R E P A T H A, and it works really well. It's just really pricey. So, and it's a weekly shot, and your cardiologist has to be willing to give it to you. Your repatha injection every, I think it's every week, maybe it's every month. But um, yeah, that's a really good option too. So uh, repatha, or let me see if I can say it, evolucumab. I think I said it, evolucumab. Pretty good. Okay. <laughs> so meds or supplements that can help or can help prevent plaque or, or prevent plaque formation. So oddly enough, women, estradiol. Prevents plaque formation, reduces coronary artery disease and strokes in women. One of the main reasons you want, as you go through menopause, you want to get on estradiol if you can, if you don't have a, a factor five Leiden or any other clotting disorder. Um, the reason you want to get on estradiol or, or history of recent breast cancer, you don't want to do it then either. But and as long as you're within a 10 year window, it's been less than 10 years since you've gone through menopause. Um, is because it prevents heart attacks and strokes and diabetes. Well, guess what those three things are? The number one through number three killers in women. Mom. Yeah, they're the big time ugly dogs out there. And estradiol prevents it. Of course, I'm going to talk about testosterone. I might as well say progesterone can help prevent um, coronary artery disease too, but not like estradiol will. No, estradiol does not work in men. Well, let me change that. Um I wouldn't give estradiol to a man uh, for plaque regression, but um, but what it does do when men take testosterone shots or, or testosterone cream, uh, they're always worried about their estradiol levels being high. That's because estradiol is cardioprotective in men. And your testosterone levels go up, your estradiol level will go up. I don't treat that anymore. I used to kind of treat it. People's requests now won't do it. Because it's cardioprotective against heart attacks and strokes. So, yeah, it helps. It works in men, too. So the reality is, though, um, when I get a, let's say, a BYU football player in here and his testosterone's 1,400, his estradiol level's through the roof. Wow, am I supposed to give him an estrogen blocker then? That's crazy. He wouldn't be able to play football. The NCAA would come unglued. And he'd fail the, the drug testing. So, um, no, and I don't treat them either. They're not going to get man boobs and everything else you, you guys are always claiming about. No, you're just imagining things. So work out harder. Um, okay, sorry. <laughs> uh, number nine, that was number eight. Remember, these are meds or supplements that can help or help prevent um, uh, plaque, uh, plaque buildup. Glutathione, can, and there's all kinds of studies that show that glutathione, if only... Someone had one that actually worked and had patents on it, all that. Anyway, um, glutathione can uh, reduce inflammation in the coronary arteries and carotid arteries. If your glutathione level is high enough, there's studies that show that you can't form plaque. Matter of fact, you won't make bad cholesterol well, supposedly. Um, and uh, you can go look those studies up on PubMed. And again, I'm, look at my search information at below when we post all this. So. Um, Number 10, optimizing IGF-1 levels, HCH levels. Again, through vitamins, that's the main way we do it. We do it everywhere. So you want to be, if the higher your IGF-1 level, the um, closer it is to, to above 200 or certainly 230, 250, even 300, right around there, that's all safe. But um, the more plaque regression you'll get because that's a HGH. So remember, uh, IGF-1 is a 
is a, um, let's see, IGF-1. We use IGF-1 as a, I'm trying to think of the exact word. It's a, it's a way we test for growth hormone levels without testing growth hormone levels because they're really hard to do that right, do that correctly. And if some doctor gets an HGH level on you, unless he's got a frozen green top tube and it's dried on, not frozen on dry ice and everything else like we do um, in the university research we did, um, you're not going to get an accurate HGH levels. It's crazy to try and get one. So, but IGF-1 uh, levels can help. So, um, fasting, intermittent fasting causes plaque regression. That's simple. I call pent ethyl. It's a very fancy FDA approved fish oil. What's it called, Jackson? I'm not sure. Yeah, that company we're always looking at back east that did the fish oil. Uh, Vesepa? Vesepa. Yeah, that can help horse or really good quality fish oil won't hurt. Uh, bergamot oil, naringenin, and the bergamot oil can lower cholesterol up to 30%. I don't know if it'll cause plaque regression, but it can lower cholesterol. I'll tell you what, naringenin, I've looked at tons of studies because we want to do some work with it. And what we found is naringenin, matter of fact, this is number 13, naringenin um, acts, like, acts, like a, acts like a natural statin. And if you have, um, so bergamot oil acts like a natural statin. So if you have um, have high cholesterol levels and you want to bring them down, try bergamot oil or naringenin or um, Pure Encapsulations makes a product called Cholestapure Plus 2 or Stephen Sinatra on Amazon has his, um, has his product, the Cholesterol Solution, I think it's, I think it's called. And they're both made with uh, bergamot oil, mainly naringenin. So that's my list. Amazing. 13. Let me go through them one more time. I'm going to do it quickly. <laughs> Try so. and spell the words out too, because that really, people really appreciate it when you spell okay. the complicated words out. Statin, simvastatin versus rosuvastatin, R O S U V A. And sim is S I M, and or sorry, simba, S I M V A, statin. Um, number two, statin plus a zetamibe. E-Z-E-T-I-M-I-B-E. -E. Works really well. Optimizing thyroid levels, mainly the FT3 levels, to around 4.0 to 4.8 according to your lab range. Lowering blood pressure, number four, lowering blood pressure to below 120 over 70. Number five, niacin, 2,000 milligrams per day. Yuck. <laughs> <laughs> uh, number six, pioglitazone in small doses for three months, maybe even up to six if you're tolerating it well. Seven, PDSK9 inhibition. Uh, it's an injectable. It's called Repatha, R-E-P-A-T-H-A. And meds or supplements that can help. Eight, estradiol, replacement therapy in women, ERT. Uh, number nine, glutathione um, can help prevent. Number 10, optimizing IGF-1 levels. Number 11, fasting, intermittent fasting can help. So weight loss and definitely helps cause plaque regression. Number 12, icosapin ethyl, also called Vesquipa, right? Do we know if it's ves Vesepa or Vesquipa? I've always known as Vesepa. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> 13, bergamot oil and orangenic can lower cholesterol up to 30%. I don't. I'm pretty sure there's no plaque regression studies on it, but it can't lower cholesterol. So in cholesterol plus two and, and Steven Sinatra's health... Uh, help or cardio let's see cholesterol solutions i think it's called so um that's my list are there any questions there's a lot of questions yeah. how much glutathione do you recommend daily according to what brand you use i'm not going to claim any certain brand will do this better than others but there's a brand designed by a certain physician that's really <laughs> good well, we do have all kinds of us patents we've been awarded on a japanese patents and other patents so but um, Generally, how much though? Because we proved it worked. Um, eight, probably eight squirts a day minimum to maybe 30 for a while if you want to really take care of it. Cool. Some other questions. With the bergamot oil that you recommended, how do people use it for the benefits that you're talking about? I don't know. Look at Cholestapure Plus 2. Look at um, look at Stephen Sinatra's, and that's pure encapsulations, Cholestapure Plus 2. And look at Stephen Sinatra's. Um, 
Cholesterol Solutions. Can you hand me that bottle by you on the left? Hey, I don't own any stock of these guys. Are really, they're a good company, but that's Cholesterol Plus 2. And it says take 28. No, I'm kidding. Take two per day. <laughs> it's worth a try. Yeah. Okay. It's How? a natural statin, oddly enough. Oh, it is. According to the studies I've seen. Wow. It also gets rid of liver inflammation from resuvastatin and stuff like that. Mm. So, so it cures or, or helps resolve, apparently, other issues. statin issues. Yeah. That's pretty crazy. good. Yeah, it's cool. Um. How can you tell that it's actually working? Like, what testing can you do to make sure that you Pull up on the is... calcium score. Okay. And what should your calcium score be? That was Normal zero. Not like it shouldn't be any number? Well, that's a big That's Because someone question. was like, they mentioned theirs was 25. And they that's, said, is that bad? I think that's pretty good. But according to the machine, they didn't know the range. Okay. They're so going to vary a little. Check that. Um. Is... What can you say again? The two statins that you generally recommend? Simva statin, S I M B A S T A T I N. Simva, like Simba. No, that was Simba the lion. <laughs> it said with a B. This is with a V as in victory. And Rosuva statin, also called Crestor. It's generic Crestor. As far as I know, at least in my study, and those are the only two statins that really cause plaque regression the best, if at all. A lot of them don't do any plaque regression. Are there? Those are those are fat soluble lip uh, statins, and they're the only two that do that, as far as I know. Gotcha. Are there long term side effects of statins? Yeah, your liver can be destroyed, so you want to like follow that occasionally. Yeah. Like every three to six months, especially when you get started. After that, after a year or two, you can go to once a year. Just check your your LFTs, your liver function tests. Once you go a year, you're going to be fine. Yeah. Do you recommend QNOL because statins cause memory loss or why? That was a question. I thought it was interesting. No, statins need, need uh, ubiquinol or CoQ10 to work. Okay. It's really critical to how they work. They work together. And if you don't give it enough, you'll get, you have a much higher risk for liver problems. Okay. So you take your, take your, I don't care what CoQ10, I just know mega QNOL, mega MEGA dash QNOL, QNOL works. Um, yeah. Um, how does intermittent fasting help again? Because you're going to be losing weight, lowering your, lowering your intake, really what happens. Fasting, intermittent fasting, you can do it at night, like from, you can go from six to six every day, or six, six to seven, or six to eight. You know, you just drink water at night. Eat your last meal at, at 5.30, and then at 6, you start fasting. It's really not that big a deal. It's not that hard. Yeah. Hey, um, <clears throat> some people are asking about even our brain support supplement. Um, with our brain support, the CoQ10 that's in that one is ubiquinone, not ubiquinol. But it's the way it's handled completely differently exactly. than any other ubiquinone because they micronized it. Yep. They not only micronized it, but they... Um, uh, they put it in a, um, what's that called? The little circle. The, little... the cyclodextrin ring. Yeah, they used the cyclodextrin ring. And they, the reason we we were originally approached is because we were playing around with those concepts. And um, and that was a Mitsubishi company. They said, wait, we're doing this. We own this. So stop and we'll give you the license for it. And we're like, good. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. And just as a little side note, Ubiquinone is more used in the energy pathways as, as far as I understand it in the energy pathways in the mitochondria that's why we put it in our brain support product yeah. specifically it's got to be you, that form of ubiquinone that's what gives you the, the benefit with that particular uh, product the the uh, PQQ yeah that's weird it's one of the non rule no, it's the unrule compared to me usually saying using ubiquinol but it's the way it is yep they have different purposes so they're both very important they do. yeah I still take, even though I take two of those a day, at the brain sports, I still take um, a, a mega q and all. Yeah. Every day, one of those, too. So I'm only getting 300 milligrams of essentially CoQ10 a day. Yeah. So what if and you... some days I throw down more if I'm really tired. 
What if you can't take statins? Do you have like those other recommendations? That's yeah, what all you would these other recommendations I gave you. Okay. Try so it's not like belong. take everything. You say, do you have like recommendation to start with something or kind of? Yeah, you know what? I'm serious about your thyroid and your growth hormone level. How can you do that without taking those? Get your, um, make sure you don't have any vitamin deficiencies. Yeah, I was supposed to remind you about that. Oh, yeah, the CMA test. So Cell Science System has a new test. Um, I think they someone there must have worked for SpectraCell. Because we just added this a, a couple of weeks ago. Because uh, we got results back on my wife and myself, and they're very accurate. But they look about 80 tests, and it's cheaper, and it's faster. Mm -hmm. But they're using the, if you look at what they've used, it's the exact same technology as SpectraCell. Yeah, it is. And I'm sure their patents have long since run out over at SpectraCell. But a SpectraCell looks at some different things, so there's a, a use for both. Um, but this, it looks at a lot more minerals and amino, amino acids, acids and stuff. Yeah. It's really cool. So, And it's cheaper. Yeah. It's $400, and it's... Um, and we get the results back in about 10 days. Yeah, 10 to 12. So that's a good option to always make sure you're checking your vitamins, right? Right, because if your vitamins are good, everything will work correctly, and your lab will have a lot less plaque and cholesterol buildup and inflammation. Yeah. Probably the biggest problem I see among my patient population are vitamin deficiencies, which is crazy. But some of them are horrible. Like some I reviewed this weekend were awful. I mean, it's like, how are those people alive? It's so sad. Yeah. So, but you know what? They're going to feel really good. I pray that the results are bad because if, especially if you're bad, because it suddenly explains everything and you deal with those vitamin deficiencies in about six months, you're really, really good. How do you combat the muscle cramps that some statins can cause? Ubiquinol, CoQ10. That's just key to everything with statins. Uh, it kind of is, or get off of it if it's a problem. Yeah. Change to a different statin. What about if you have low blood pressure? You talked about having high blood pressure. What if you have low, but you still have all these problems? Is there a... So coronary artery disease? This lady, she says she is low still. Pretty unusual to have it, wouldn't you? So I know I deal with those too. Well, you don't have to worry about lowering your blood pressure. You should still, you know, consider other options. Like like the statin, like the uh, like the azetamide, things like that. You need to see your uh, cardiologist or lipidologist. So a, a, a cardiologist who specializes in cholesterol problems is a lipidologist. Lipidologist. L-I-P-I-D, lipidologist. O-L-O-I-G-I-S-T. Big cities have lipidologists. <laughs> Little cities, farm towns don't have lipidologists. They're big, fancy, super Special smart. Special doctors. Guys that, yeah, laugh at me, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think a low carb diet would be beneficial when taking steps? Always. Okay. Thought beneficial that was and everything. Yeah. Get your diabetes under control. If you're diabetic and it's not quite under control, ask for pioglitazone. It will save your bacon because your risk for heart attack and stroke is three times or even higher risk um, than anyone else. So you want to make sure it gets under control. I'm just checking all the comments. Anything else? Is there a specific med, like blood pressure med that you like? I know you said Americans takes four. There's waves. There's, you should start with the minimum. Like if you're if nothing else has worked, you tried everything, exercise, weight loss, dietary changes, avoiding salt, all that. Um, yeah, maybe start with hydrochlorothiazone. And maybe go up from there. According to what you've got and what's going on with you. Yeah. So when I start blood pressure meds very reluctantly when nothing else has worked. Totally. Sometimes you got to bring them down. They come in at 220 over 180, you got problems. Yeah. Does reducing the plaque in your arteries also help reduce the risk of Alzheimer's? Yes, absolutely. Because isn't there something with cholesterol in the brain? Statins dramatically reduce your risk for Alzheimer's. That's really interesting. Yeah. I did not put that in my st my my tips. big PowerPoint talk because those were natural options. I was asked to or supplements for to prevent Alzheimer's disease and dementia when I gave that talk in Miami. So it's limited. 
Yeah. The statins are a big player preventing dementia. It's really interesting. Um, Is that um, about it? Yeah, we're doing pretty good. Okay, good. Okay, I love all you guys. You guys we're remember, gonna... you can always rewatch this. There's a lot of information that we dropped on you. <laughs> Don't forget, you can always rewatch this right immediately after, and we'll be a podcast and a YouTube video in a couple of days. So, yep, I think we had a lot of new people on here tonight too. Mm -hmm. um, so just to give you a couple extra links to go check out, we did cover a lot of information. Uh, go to Amazon, look Dan Purser, MD, for all of his books. Uh, start looking at those content, those all that content. Uh, head right on to danpursermd.com and start reading and watching away. We have tons and tons of videos and blog posts and things there. So for those new people, welcome. Uh, you've stepped into a great word of a great world. And and the uh, uh, Twitter account that got taken over, don't mention it. Mention it. Well, no. you mentioned it no. now. <laughs> you don't need to. You're okay. No, he's Twitter on Facebook. He's on Instagram. You he's back. on YouTube. He's it's, not on Twitter. So sorry. Gone, you can't find him forever. there. Like yeah, if anyone tweets on it, it's not me, so they won't give it back to me. So um, yeah, makes, makes me sad. I'm gonna start another one. No, Snarky you're okay. Doctor, you're good. You're on Facebook. Snarky you're on Instagram. Doctor Twelve. <laughs> okay, uh, okay. Well, I love all you guys. We're gonna try and do these every other week. We're gonna be the hammer about it. We've got lots of good content coming up. Lots of good ideas. Um, and Jackson, I've been planning this since last year and um we have some pretty amazing things happening with our biotech with all this work we're doing all this stuff we're doing so anyway thanks god bless and go in good health Bye.